What's up everyone, it's Biz with another Division 2 build video. Today we're going to be talking about gear sets. You know, those green pieces that were king in the first game, only to fall from grace when we landed in DC. It's been a minute for sure, but it's safe to say that gear set viability is back in TU10, and more so in TU11 with Hunter's Fury. We'll dive into this and the build I'm running that brings back an old favorite exotic as well. But without waiting, let's get into it. So before we get all the way into the build, I did mention we're going to talk about gear sets and their viability. Now for people who've been playing Division 2 since release, it hasn't been great for our green buddies. In the first year, we saw True Patriot, Ongoing Directive, and Hardwired first. These were followed by the Raidlock Negotiator's Dilemma, Aces and Eights, and Tip of the Spear. While these sets certainly filled a niche, they were underwhelming. In fact, a poll I did with some members of Rapture Gaming Community, the majority, about 75%, still favored or were indifferent to steering away from gear set builds. I think a lot of this had to do with the underwhelming nature of the piece bonuses and also the missing stat attributes you had to lose out on when running a gear set. Either way, in TU10 and beyond, we saw strides in the right direction. TU10 brought us a few new gear sets each season. Season 1 we were introduced to System Corruption and greeted by our old friend Striker's Battle Gear. Season 2 brought the raid sets Foundry Bulwark and Future Initiative alongside Eclipse Protocol. Finally, in this season, we're met with the cousin of Hunter's Faith, Hunter's Fury. TU10, and more specifically TU10.1, also brought some sweeping changes to gear sets, most of which seeing sizable buffs that allowed the gear set bonuses to compete against missing stat attributes. Also, these gear sets fill a much better niche in team dynamic, such as dedicated status effects, healer, or even tank builds. With all of that info, it's no wonder the survey results of a post-TU10 game tell a different story in where 87.5% of those polled are indifferent or favor a gear set build when Slay and Bowden the Division. So that was a lot to take in. But now that we've got the framework of where gear sets are now, let's get into this build featuring our new shiny gear set that is Hunter's Fury. So Hunter's Fury is a pretty cool set. Um, the two-piece bonus gives you 15% shotgun damage and 15% SMG damage. When you move up to three pieces, you're going to get armor on kill. Uh, that's 20% armor on kill and 100% health on kill. And finally, the four piece bonus is Apex Predator, which is not only cool, but extra lethal in which enemies within 15 meters receive a debuff, amplifying or multiplying your weapon damage against them by 20%. Then killing a debuffed enemy with your weapon disorients other enemies within 5 meters and amplifies weapon damage by 5% for 10 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. Now obviously the chest and the backpack talent have uh, talents that buff both the amount of time the stacks stay active and also the meters of disorient, which we'll get into a little bit later in this build. So first and foremost, I want to thank the developers for not nerfing this from the PTS. It's amazing to feel powerful, and honestly this build is just a lot of fun to play when you're in the game, you're all gas, no brakes, slay and boat. If you play like that, this is definitely the gear set and build for you. Now if you are a fan of not being told what to do and you have no rules in your life, if you are going to go off script with this build, I definitely encourage to keep distance in mind though. If you play from medium or long range, this build is definitely not for you. It's also a very high-risk, high-reward playstyle in which you're going to get kills, but being in the front means meeting force with greater force, or you will go down a lot. Now, with this build I have today, we do take full advantage of Hunter's Fury, but we'll also be leaning on some gun and chess piece talents from brand sets. So let's dive in. So we're going to start with weapons, and to get it going, we're going to start with the Chatterbox. And it's going to be collecting dust on my wall, for a really long time, but it's ideal for this build. The talent was reworked some time ago where you get a rate of fire buff for every enemy within 15 meters of the previous magazine. Also, kills refill half the mag. So not only do you not have to worry about reload when playing right, but the rate of fire buff feels like you're popping a tactical link in D1, and that's pretty awesome. Next, we have the MOP, which is the new 612 shotgun, it's the named variant. I consider this my medkit gun, in which when I'm low on armor, I pull this gun out and steal some armor for every kill. With the gear set talent, along with gunner and this gun, 
I'm getting close to a third of my armor back on kill. And that's bananas. What would be even more crazy would be preservation on this gun as well, which I have done since capturing this footage, and it is nasty. Definitely recommend doing it. Moving into the gear side of things, we are running the four-piece Hunter's Fury with a Grupo Sombra chest and my old reliable Fox's Prayer. Now this is an all-red build as the armor on kill and hopefully my superior playing will be the thing keeping me alive. So what's really important about this build is that I'm running Obliterate for the chest talent. For those who haven't checked the patch notes or don't have a friend like my buddy Jim, Obliterate got a buff to where critical hits will stack 1% weapon damage for five seconds and can stack for 25 times. So with an SMG and the nature of shotgun pellets in the game, I'm stacking a lot of damage when my crit chance is high. Another thing with this build, I want the backpack talent of Hunter's Fury for two reasons. Firstly, you're getting a radius buff to the Apex Predator Disorient from five meters to 10 meters. Secondly, that backpack is just too cool looking. It has a hunter's mask as a trophy. Come on, beautiful design work. Finally, I also went with Fox's Prayer on this as my other piece because of that amplified damage targets outside of cover. It's just too hard to quit. It, like literally until enemies start really using cover, you can expect me to use this 90% of the time on my builds. It's just too good. And that's the build, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like and subscribe for more Division 2 content. Also, if you're trying to find people to game with, check out Rapture Gaming Community at discord.gg slash rapturegaming. We will be hosting a Summit Floor Clearing Racing League this fall. It's going to be super sweaty and a lot of fun. But I'll see you all next video. Biz out.